Welcome back, everybody, to another Engage TV game. Uh, this time we have, I, I believe we have shuffled the two teams that we just saw play, right? Or do, yes, we have new we have. we have new people. Uh, we have new people in this game, so. Yeah, right. We have five. We have five new people. So another game was happening simultaneously while this one was. Mm -hmm. And uh, now. And now it's the it's the two winners. Games. Have been yeah, shuffled. Have been shuffled. Exactly. Okay. So the and ten winning, this game. the ten winning players from the last two games that were played, one of them you just saw, uh, have been placed into a game, and we shuffled up the teams. And now here we go. Right off the bat, Nature's Prophet getting banned out. Of course. Who wants to play up against a Nature's Prophet? Not me. Nothing special. Not wanting to play up against that Nature's Prophet. And OD coming through in the first span. So we might see either a Bat Rider or. A Darkseer make it through the pool unless they're both banned here, which is likely going to happen. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a, a kind of a weird shift in uh, the way people are drafting now. It's like they, they'll start banning out mid-heroes a little faster. Mm -hmm. um, like the OD, for some reason, is getting all these like really high-priority bans. I know he's like a super tough hero to go up against in the middle lane, but like you can solve that pretty much just by having uh, a heavy gank-oriented lineup. Uh, or, yeah, or running a Razor against him or a Kunkka. I mean, he doesn't do great against every single hero, but he does force you to react draft very specifically. Exactly. Yeah, he does yeah. force you to draft very specifically. And he's the type of hero that if you don't ban him early and he makes it through and he's like their fourth or fifth pickup, that can be very problematic for you, especially if you've already picked up a mid like a Puck. Um, and Batrider making it through, so... Yeah, pick up here. We'll have to see. Perhaps nothing special playing the Bat Rider. He did play our Weaver in the last game. Uh, we'll have to see if they give him as much priority putting him into the Off -lane easy lane or whatever. Um, so one thing that is worth mentioning is that uh, the Engage TV, the series, I guess you could call it, uh, is it basically a series of game of four games. Uh, so uh, four games, right? Three games. Three, three games. games. A series of three games, right? Uh, where we'll have the two games that we uh, just saw one of, and then you'll just have the final. So it's a pretty short series of games, basically, but uh, this will essentially be the final. Uh, the winning team of this will receive their boost in points on Engage TV. So uh, both teams on the edge of their seats right now, waiting with bated breath <laughs> for the results. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Really hoping to win. Actually, this answers our question. The dire side is red the entire time and now that i, I look see. at it i don't remember it being that way yeah i think they might have changed it uh, that might have been a change that might have been a change not a huge change but certainly <laughs> one that, that, that yes. stands out just a little bit yeah Perhaps certainly right for the international certainly a change that slightly altered the color of our screens in a small area yeah yeah it makes, <laughs> it, makes it interesting but uh one of the things i do want to say um about how the ranking works and it's pretty cool when you start up you you're in this unassigned bracket so you connect to your dota buff and you're in this unassigned bracket it judges where you belong but up until you even play one or two games you're going to be unassigned and then there's a bronze silver and gold um and getting into the bronze silver and gold allow you to participate in more things now this isn't the open beta so it only started about four days ago so things are starting out pretty slowly but as more people join, as more people play these tournaments, are going to be for some immortal items, some cool stuff. Uh, people are going to pick up some real prizes coming in and playing here. Of course, some team games are also a possibility. So as your ranking improves, there's a good possibility that, uh, say, only gold-tier players will be allowed to participate in a certain tournament um, or silver-tier players. So getting these 100 points and starting out early and actually joining the league now... Um, is a pretty good thing to do. You do pretty well kind of moving up. And, you know, hopefully whatever team picks up the win here, they take their 100 points and they move on into a bigger league. I don't yeah. think uh, it's on to, actually Silver League yet. Moving on to I bigger and better places. I actually just checked the site, and they may have changed it. Maybe I just misread it. But it looked mm. like uh, nothing special was actually in the gold thing. Or maybe I was just horribly misreading the site. But it seemed like nothing special got boosted up to that gold league. Yeah, I mean, everyone can join the events right now. All of these events are open to everyone. I'm just, I'm making the assumption that perhaps in the future, 
Yeah, I know, I know. But you're you're just saying that like you you didn't think anybody was in the silver league yet. But I'm looking at the thing right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's even. Oh no, maybe that just means that he's the best. Yeah, he got a gold medal. So I was wrong. Yeah, he's the, he, no, he's the best in the qualifying league. That's why he's the best qualifying player. And there's a best bronze player who is nothing special, who I played see. the Weaver in the last game. But no one's in the silver or gold league yet. Uh, one of the outstanding things, one of the things about the qualifying league is um, they don't allow a captain's mode. They allow only all pick. Uh, and the reasoning is, is pretty good considering that a lot of people either A, have never played captain's mode, um, or B, might not be good captains um you, you know either drafting a team that their teammates can't play or drafting a team that their teammates can play but that makes no sense on paper right so you know this this is one of the one of the opportunities to earn extra points and to kind of show yourself in captain's mode um and i mean i'm just going to assume that Sightras was the captain in the last game as well so i guess that's decided internally amongst the players once they join the lobby uh, but everything, I mean, from your win rate, everything is kind of tracked and it's cool. Once you're done with the game, you submit uh, how the um, but how a the screenshot. Game went. Yeah, like a screenshot of, of who won, uh, and you get points uh, awarded on that. The one nice thing I like is uh, the reporting system is a little more serious. Just a screenshot of someone really flaming gets them um, in trouble with the league. And it's not like, you know, in trouble in Dota where you're muted. Once you're really kicked out of this league, you're kicked out for good. So it's it's a place where you're going to have um, a, a slightly kind of, I guess, more respectful community, uh, which is not <laughs> yeah. a bad thing at all. Lolik, <laughs> Lolik says your mic is terrible, by the way. And I agree, Lolik, but he's getting a new one. He's getting a new one soon. So issues will be solved soon enough. Uh, getting back into the draft here, uh, we do see that we have the gyro. It's kind of, you know, you can, you can send this lineup anywhere for the dire side right now. Uh, Gyro could go into that tri lane with a support Nyx Assassin. Darks here obviously going off lane. You could also send Gyro mid. You could send Nyx mid. You know, everybody, everybody on the Dire team kind of exercising their options, their availabilities right now. Uh, we do have the Coddle ban. Coddle getting banned out less lately, and I don't like that because Coddle is like a stupid good hero. Um, he got like a he got like a super small nerf, and it was it wasn't like super like super small but it also wasn't large enough for him to just completely fall out of the meta which he hasn't but he's kind of like dropped a tier at least um yeah, he used to be like first pick for his man was you got the coddle because he fits in that tri lane so well he's good aggressive tri laning he's good defensive tri laning he's got the unlimited mana for an entire team and recall is such a such a such an amazing ability because your hero can die, buy back, and get recalled into a fight late game. So he's a hero. He's a support that also scales really well as far as yeah. his utility. Uh, yeah. And he's able to farm the jungle, which means he can actually get up pretty good items pretty quickly. Yeah. The uh, and so. Coddle, uh, when when you have a Coddle on your team, you can essentially buy an Aegis, um, because if you have enough money for buyback when you die, you can just buy back and then you're back exactly where the coddle is because he can instantly summon you and you just bought yourself an Aegis for like a thousand gold. So he's a good ban and a good pick. I'd like to see him get banned earlier and picked earlier. He's just a good hero in general. Um, but you know, there are also other good supports out there. Rubik being one of them. Naga Siren can also be one of them, but she's a good carry too. Might be their carry, might be their support. Both teams kind of keeping their options open at this point. No one committing to a certain lineup, which is what I've been seeing a lot more of lately. Like teams are picking up all these high priority picks um, that kind of define their lineup. And, and they're always like first pick or something like that, which is like insanity because then you just kind of show your your cards at the start of the game like very first draft you pick up your like hard carry that's obviously going into your tri lane and then you pick up like a some support that is that pairs really well with him they already know like two out of three of your heroes in your tri lane and then they can pretty much devise where you're going from there so i don't know i like i like the way both of these teams are drafting they're keeping their cards to their chest right now yeah, so, I mean, they both picked up an offlaner. Um, they have, okay, so now we have the third piece of what I'm going to assume is the tri-lane. Uh, 
coming out of them, and they've actually got two good stuns. So, you know, the trilane coming out there with the gyrocopter rocket barrage is going to be pretty good. Uh, it's a trilane they can run aggressively, but probably won't. I mean, defensively, it'll be just as successful, and their supports are going to be able to stack and pull and get some quick levels on that Nyx Assassin, who really, really needs them. All right, um, so, Dennis, uh, yes. apparently P uh, there are people watching in-game, so just turn on your open mic threshold and turn it all the way down to nothing. In, okay, in the audio options. Settings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just figure that out. Meanwhile... Turn it all have... the way down, I'm sorry. Yes, turn it all the way down. Vengeful Spirit getting picked up. Probably going to be that tri-laning support. Supporting that gyro there. Big assassin still. They're still kind of keeping it open. Picking up a picking up a support here. They could pick a mid. They could send Nyx mid, pick another support. It all depends. I like the Venge pickup, though. It's a nice pickup. Yeah. Nice initiator. Absolutely. The Venge has that, um, she's got that stun and magic missile, and of course, wave of terror. Yes, she does have those two abilities, unlike yes, any other does. hero. She does, she does, have, <laughs> she does have, she does have those two abilities that she uses quite often. Marana getting picked up, MLG arrows. Let's do this. I love it when people pick up Marana. Her ulti is so much fun. Pop it in the middle of a team fight and it's chaos. Throw an arrow and you're a badass. Jump away and you're still alive. Do some Star Storm and yeah, Star Storm is my least favorite ability that she has. It's, it's a good nuke. Yeah, but it does do a lot of burst damage. Yeah, it's a good nuke, and it's got a pretty wide radius, um, relatively wide radius. So yeah, I wouldn't mind right. seeing some really good AOE damage come out of them, uh, just because with the Naga Siren ulti and the Invis. Coming out of Murata, Moonlight Shadow coming out of Murata, they're going to have such an opportunity to initiate, and a Death Prophet. Well, the reason that I really... Okay, I, I actually really like the Radiance lineup here. They have a bunch of single target disable. Ooh, the Anti-Mage, Jesus. This just got serious. Um, yeah. The reason that I like uh, the Radiance lineup is because they have the Naga Siren to initiate, right, with that song. And then you go in, and you literally have four heroes right off the bat that are immediately... Taken, well, not taken down, but disabled. You've got the arrow, you've got a net from the Naga, you've got the lift from the Rubik, and you've got a lasso from the Batrider. And that's four heroes, yeah, and separate like heroes. Anti -mage is just wailing yeah. on them. Exactly, exactly. And so now it actually looks like Death Prophet is going to get picked up by the Dire here. I like Death Prophet. She can own towers really, really, really hard with her ulti. So. Yeah, and she's a difficult ulti to engage into. I don't know what the interaction is actually with her ulti and Naga's sleep. <clears throat> So anyway, um, let's predict the lanes. I like doing this before every game. Probably going to see a tri lane from the Dire Hero, Gyrocopter, Nyx Assassin, Vengeful Spirit. Uh, and then probably Death Prophet going into mid, Darkseer going into the off lane. For the Radiant, we'll probably I see... Think it's the Batrider mid. Yeah, either uh, uh, Marana, Marana off lane. Offlane. Yeah, yeah, Marana off lane, Batrider mid, and then the tri lane, Anti Mage, Naga, Rubik. Naga obviously supporting the Anti Mage. What if there was a support? Wait, my mic is muted, it says right here. I don't know what that means. I just don't know what that means, honestly. Um, I see your sound going through in the Dota TV client. Oh, um, and now it's going, oh, now that I click. Oh, and I'm not speaking. Oh, I see. This works, this works wonderfully. Anyway, I'm gonna mute you. So do I enable open mic or turn it off? Enable it. Enable open mic. Okay. Um, I hear okay. myself. Oh, no, I stopped hearing myself. That's fixed. Okay, because I was hearing myself. Wait, no, mute. I can hear you now. Stop talking. Okay. Mute code broadcasters. Cool. I can't actually adjust the broadcasters for some reason. So. I know, but just go to your options, same place, and hit mute code broadcasters. Mute code broadcasters. There we go. All right. I think you just did it. There good. we go. All right. Okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. Sorry about that. Little uh, little technical difficulty there. Let's introduce the two teams. You go for the Radiant. All right. So on the Radiant side, we have nothing special. We're going to be playing that off lane Marana. We have Bart. Solai going to be playing the Anti Mage. We have Danny going to be playing that Naga Siren. M4T3JK0 going to be playing the Batrider and Gretel 
gonna be playing the Rubik. And on the dire side, we have uh, Citraz or Citraz on that Death's Prophet, Trafalgar Law on the Vengeful Spirit here, Koner Show on Nyx Assassin, uh, Einstweck Black on. <laughs> I like that name. Einstweck Black on the Gyrocopter. I'm probably butchering that name. And finally, Pandello on the Darkseer. Oh, Pandello. Going into that hard knock life lane. I don't know if people can hear. I Can I hear double the music? I'm pretty sure I can hear double the music right now. Is that like yeah, an audio I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what enabling these options does for us because I sometimes hear myself uh, when I'm speaking in the game. So. Well, I mean, as long as I can't hear you, then we're all good. Yeah. I guess it's not so bad. I like we'll, it. We'll figure it know. out after, but people for now wanted to hear me in the game, and it looks like, yes, they can hear me in the game. So, welcome to all of you in Dota TV. Sorry for the delay there. I had no idea that uh, I was still muted. Engage TV, Soul Eye. You did pretty good on the Alchemist last game. I can hear you clicking now. You can hear me clicking. Yeah, now I can hear you again. Did you just, like, unmute something? Yeah, yeah, I changed the, the no, sound, actually. No, no, don't change it. Change it back. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> because now I can hear doubles of you. And now it's gone again. Now I can hear you again. Okay, okay. That's good? That's good? No, no, you need to turn it back again. You just turned it back on. There you go. Now it's good. Um, well, is that good? Yeah, yeah, leave it like that. Okay. Um, okay. No, you just turned it back on again. <laughs> My God, Dennis. <laughs> so, so, so that's just what happens when I'm in the settings. I don't know if I can cast from the settings. Well, did you turn? <laughs> you clearly changed something. While, like, you clearly changed something, and then you were like, "I changed something," and I was like, "No, go change that back." And now, for some reason, you're unable to find what you changed before. Yeah, basically. Okay, is that good? Is that good? Yeah, now? you're fine. We're fine now. Yeah, right. Just don't right. change anything from now on. I'm not. I'm not gonna stop playing with the options. I just wanted to know what the buttons did. Um. All right. Yeah. Okay. No more playing with buttons. Um. So here we go. Offensive tri lane, quite possibly here. Actually, the Marana is gonna be farming in the uh, solo anti mage here in the bottom lane. Mm hmm. I like it. Anti-Mage, one of those heroes that can uh, farm pretty well. I mean, he's going to have a bit of a tough time up against the Darks here. But it actually won't be that bad. If he goes an early point into mana break, he's able to come up and really hit that Darks here a couple of times, and then Darks here doesn't have any mana left. So um, he, that's not a bad matchup at all. And that's actually I, pretty common. I've seen uh, the Darks here. I mean, the Anti-Mage run up against the Darks here. But, of course, the Darks here can get really aggressive up against that hero since the anti -Mage does not have a lot of health to start in the game. Actually, here we go, the, the lift up on this Nyx Assassin. The net is there. Everybody just going to have a right-click fest. I love these right-click fests at the start of every game. Kappa pauses. But yeah, that's pretty much every kill at the start of every game is just a big right-click fest and see who can right-click faster. <laughs> yeah, so we've actually like, got Venge has a magic missile here and Gyrocopter has not leveled anything. I'm assuming he's gonna level Rocket Barrage now that he's here, but they might get a return kill here, but almost certainly the Nyx is gonna give up first blood because the Nyx has opted to level mana burn first. I'm not exactly sure why, perhaps leveling it before the engagement, but a stun would have been much better. Spike Carapace would have been really good right now, considering he's just getting hit by a bunch of heroes. Darkseer yeah. is going to be a little late into the lane because he has DC'd out, so... But the anti-mage, no points yet into uh, into mana break, perhaps wanting to see the Darkseer first, just to make sure. And while we wait here, what do you think is the game plan? So, you're the Dire team on the Radiant team, right? What's your game plan for this game? How are you going to take this game to the throne and win? Uh, the Dire need to use their death profit to push early um okay gyro is kind of their safety net they are going to lose the late game <laughs> there's like there's no question about it really they're pretty much going to lose the late game if they let it go that long the radiant have a naga an anti-mage and a marana 
and all they really have for the late game uh, is like the gyro basically. So uh, and you know kind of the dark seer, uh, but you know they're just kind of counting on that early push from the dark uh, death prophet uh, to kind of finish this a little a little faster than the anti mage can farm up a full six slot inventory. Okay. Anti mage getting pulled a buttload of uh, regen, salve and yeah, he's a tango. Need a lot of regen. He's gonna need a lot of regen from Danny actually. Danny playing uh... the Naga. The Naga. Okay, yeah. So I mean, he's able to pick up himself some more. Also, not able to start with any items, but the Naga not really dependent on items early on. Um, really does okay with just sort of spells. From the radiant side, I think the plan is as follows. I think they want to hold it off for as long as possible. Hold off that push that they know is coming out of that Death Prophet. They want Rubik really on the front lines because there are a lot of high priority spells that can be stolen uh, that are very useful all the time. So they want him at a quick level six. They want to take the game obviously as late as possible. Like you said, the anti mage, of course, can out carry their team and everyone on their team is going to out carry their team. But I think the biggest thing that they want to do is the interaction between the Bat Rider, the Naga Sleep, and the Marana. Uh, they're going to want to punish any kind of early push and any kind of mid game aggression. So as soon as the Dire team moves in to be aggressive or take down a tower, they want to sleep into Arrow, into Lasso, disable everyone, bring down everyone they need to bring down, and then get out. Right. Uh, so that's going to be really good. I'm very interested in the interaction between Death Prophet's ultimate, um, sorry, Exorcism, Death Prophet's ultimate, and Naga Siren's sleep. Because I want to know if the ultimate continues to do damage during Naga Siren's sleep. Uh, I'm not exactly no. sure. I've never seen. Oh, so oh! If she if she gets sleeped, ah, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, right. If she sets off the ultimate and then everybody gets slept, does the ultimate continue to do damage? Because I think then, it might. It seems uh, like yeah, the exactly. kind of thing that might. Cause That's they're, a good counter then. You know, yeah, because the Radiant... Far away. Yeah, the Radiant aren't invulnerable during a sleep, so... I mean, hypothetically, it should probably work. Look at, uh... Look at Snow Eye's Anti-Mage set. Is it it's cool? A, I haven't seen it. It's pretty cool. It's kind of shiny. It's kind of it glitched out on my screen. So, like, all the shininess of the blades are, like, disconnected from the blades for some reason. Uh-huh. It does look really it's cool. cool. He's got a there. rare mask. He's got a nice armor. And here we go, actually. We missed that uh, that first blood. We didn't really miss it. We saw the first little bit. I was staring at the anti-mage, though. The Nyx Assassin does fall, and there will be no follow-up from the Dire team. They do know now that that camp is warded because the Rubik was able to lift uh, the Nyx Assassin from around the corner here. Around this corner, a little 90-degree lift. And so... Death Prophet up against the Bat Rider. Who do you say wins? Oh, the Bat Rider is certainly going to win. The Bat Rider wins most matchups. Yeah. Um, Unless she so... gets a magic wand, which she did. Magic yeah, she stick. She does pick up that magic stick, and that's a great idea. That's actually really good for the Death Prophet, who uh, you know tends to be very mana dependent, but can farm with that mana. I don't see as much Nate Bombs fan coming out of the Bat Rider, but he's at an early level, so perhaps something not to do that until he picks up a bottle. Um, Anti mage. Be soon. He has rushed it. Anti mage going to be using a lot of regen here. He's already forced to use his salve and a tango, just a minute and a half into the game. Those dark sheer ion shells, man. Dark sheer. Yeah, those dark sheer ion shells are really good. But you see, the dark sheer is already down to fifty health, and he's only plays two ion shells. So fifty far. health. I uh, have fifty what mana. You crazy. I'm so sorry. Oh, I see. <laughs> fifty mana. My God. Uh, <laughs> So, so I kind of in a situation where it's difficult for him to stay in the lane very long and not just cut creeps all the time. He already doesn't have enough mana, actually. I can kind of see why uh, why this Nyx Assassin picked up Mana Bird first because it's nice just to kind of like as a as a general harass for your lane, but mm -hmm. it wasn't the greatest because of the early initiation. I guess he was probably counting on getting his level two before there was any kind of fight. Um, right. But, you know, generally, you know, that's why players kind of save their s skill points until they know exactly what they need it for. So that right, just exactly in case something like that does it happen. The net is up. The lift. Venge. The arrow lands. What a combo of stuns. Oh, my God. Rubik falling actually very low there, but won't die. No one willing to man up and dive that Rubik. Salve and clarity. So they will stay in lane. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Darkseer 
Doing just fine. Let's check the last hits. Anti-Mage at 16 last hits, actually, up against this Dark Seer's 11. So Anti-Mage yeah, doing... Yeah, we didn't even farm under tower, so as long as... Um, as long as Solai here is good at farming under tower and good at last hitting under tower, um, he shouldn't have much of a problem because, look, this Dark Seer already is just in so much trouble. He has no mana. He's not going to have... He's actually opted to go for a bottle and not for a soul ring um, just because of how this lane is going so far. Mm -hmm. And actually, the Batrider are falling very low. And so is the Death Prophet. Both of them are going to bottle up, but... Just exchanging hits. You know how it goes in the middle lane. You know how it goes. That's like the pimp life. Is like living the middle lane life of Dota. Mm -hmm. It's like the pimp life. You get you get all the like regen sometimes. You know everybody's counting on you to to uh, kind of support the team with some ganks and shit. Everybody, you're kind of like the big daddy of uh, of your team. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, such such a pivotal position. You see it in a lot of teams where the other two lanes could go great. But if the middle lane loses, their team kind of falls apart just because of how dependent they are, not only on that player's performance, but also usually on that hero. The middle lane getting priority both on levels, um, on survivability, and on farms. So you really want to put a high priority hero there. And sticking this Death Prophet here is a very good idea just because a quick level 6 is going to allow her to push towers. I mean, the second this Batrider leaves for even a single rotation, this Death Prophet is going to be able to do a lot of damage. And she's actually picked up a double damage. This could be... This could spell very bad things for this Batrider, especially since the Death Prophet almost has level 6. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Indeed. And so it kind of looks like these two tri-lanes are just, like, waiting to initiate on each other. And here we go. We see the pings. Nothing special. MLG arrow. MLG arrow. No, he's going to save it. Unreliable stun plus reliable stun equals two reliable stuns and the net is out on the gyrocopter the rocket barrage is going to try and keep him up but he's falling very low not enough right clicks the stun comes out from the nyx assassin and saves him where's the mlg arrow actually he did use the arrow on the gyro at the start of the fight but you know i kind of want to see a snipe like a really cool arrow snipe like he's doing that you know that movie where they curve the bullets oops i just clicked a button you know that movie yeah. where they curve the bullets like he could like curve it around the creep wave and like bam right into the heart of the gyro yeah, I'm pretty sure the arrows don't curve, but if they did... Anti-Mage actually <laughs> picks up a kill on the Darkseer in the bottom lane here. Darkseer. Yeah, very well done by him. Very well done by Jesus. him. And the Darkseer is going to have so many problems, and the slow Darkseer is not a good thing for a team. I mean, that's your mech carrier. That's usually your pipe carrier. He usually wants a blink dagger for that good initiation. He wants fast levels for that quick wall. Uh, but he's not going to do that, and Anti-Mage pick up a pair of Tranquil Boots. Actually, in the middle lane... Uh, while the action was happening in other lands, Batrider actually fell down to eight health. My uh, God! That double damage. Death and he, oh my God! In the mo in the top lane, Marana actually picks up a kill on that gyrocopter. Um, was it an MLG arrow? Yes, no, I I hope it was. Yeah, the the arrow was used. I don't think she's going for those MLG arrows. Honestly, I feel like she's just going for like the Naga locks down a hero and then she goes for a regular arrow. Disappointing. Yeah. You got to count on uh, those yeah. MLG arrows. And this Darkseer is actually so poor. Look at his item. Oh, no, he bought boots. Oh, he had those on the courier. That's why. I looked at him before, and all he had was, like, a stout shield and two branches and no money. And it was like, what the fuck? How the hell did you get, like, no money in, like, six minutes? That's, like, as much money as you had at the start of the game. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised that um, that this Death Prophet is able to win this middle lane against the Batrider so handedly. Um... And she's going to be able to do a lot of damage. Like, this tower is just almost dead now. <laughs> From one ultimate. Yeah. She's basically walked in and taken it. That ulti, man. Down. And if she bursts down these creeps, she might still be able to do a little bit of damage there. No, nothing special looking to initiate here. Let's do it. Nothing special. But see an MLG arrow. Initiate with the arrow. You know how it goes. It's a gangsta life for you. I just changed up the It's a Pirate's Life for me, too. It's a gangsta life for me. I want to make, like, a gangsta remix of that song. Yeah, that would be... We should put that down on the to-do list. Have it, like, be the intro to the stream. Like, yo, hoes, <laughs> yo, hoes. The gangsta life... Wait, they don't talk like pirates. Gangsters don't, at least. Yeah, no. no typically, gangsters don't talk like pirates. Yeah, you know... If they did, not sure that they'd be really big gangsters. Batrider's rotating to this lane. If he's able... He doesn't have a blink dagger. Uh, but if he's able to firefly and just lasso this... The gyro is really far under time. We got it. We got it. Oh, here we go. The Firefly is up. Is the lasso there? 
Venge stuns up that Batrider, so now Batrider's in a little bit of trouble. The sploosh coming from the Naga Siren, she falls very low, but wands herself back up, saving herself from that ra last right click, and now Rubik down for the count. Venge almost dead, but not quite. Silence is up on the Batrider, the Surge is up on the Darkseer. Let's get him, Darkseer. Pandello, my man, going after Darkseer, or going after Batrider. I don't want to say his name, but Mate Mateko, I'm going to call him. Mateko versus Pandello. And it looks like Mateko is going to be able to get away here. Nice rotation from the uh, Dire kind of saved them a few kills there. Death Prophet coming in. Darkseer saving the day a little bit. They didn't give away too many kills. Even though the, uh, the Radiant have the MLG arrows on their side, they weren't able to pick up very many kills and actually lost a couple heroes as well. So the rotation here coming from the Batrider and the Rubik. I'm going to look for a Darkseer, maybe a Death Prophet. Not going to find anything at all. So he will return to his lane. Oh, they changed the icons now. Nice. They changed the icon for the Dire Courier. Oh, did they really? Yeah, look at the minimap. Now the Dire Courier is like slightly bluer. Oh, it is. Perhaps that's because this is a... Unusual courier? Here we go. Darkseer gonna man dire. mode against this anti-mage. The silence is up, so he's not able to get away. One more right click. There you go. 281 gold for that Death Prophet. Nicely done. A nice rotation, killing off that anti-mage who was starting to uh, snowball into his farm a little bit there. He has the 3,800 net worth and 60 last hits. So definitely yeah, not what you want. Yeah, he's gonna look to pick up a Battle Fury, and he's very likely gonna get it before... Um... Oh, here we go. The net is up on the vengeful. The net is up on the venge in the top lane, and the arrow is there. Not MLG, but an arrow nonetheless. And Rubik will fall as well to that rocket barrage, but now Gyro falling very low. Marana able to leap away just in time, and the sploosh picks it up. Naga Siren. And those splooshes, man. Those splooshes. Yeah, picking up heroes since. 1999. 1999, good year, <laughs> a lot of nines <laughs> that year. Three nines in that year? My god. And now Anti-Mage gonna man mode up against Pandello. Pandello, you have no mana, my friend. What are you doing? Anti-Mage, you got full mana, my friend. And an ulti. Just click on the guy. He's got 25 mana. Oh, weird, I'll use my ulti on him. And then I'll blink ahead of him and kill him. That's what Not they... a bad idea. That's what the anti-mage was saying in an alternate universe where he actually engaged on that Darkseer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we discussed his alternate universe plans. Trafalgar Law, sitting in the river here. It's found by a, a few Radiant heroes. Rubik taking the long way around, unable to get that lift off on the uh, Vengeful Spirit. Yeah, that arrow just barely missing both heroes. Uh, For the MLG the arrow. That was actually the first MLG arrow we saw get launched, and it missed. Yeah, I mean, it'll turn out well, I'm sure, for them. But, I mean, this Death Prophet's already doing great work. That bottom tier one is gone, that middle tier one is gone. And so far, your plan is working much better than my plan for the Radiant. I mean, your plan for the Dire is working better than my plan for the Radiant. And if we look at the gold, the Dire actually ahead by 1,000 gold. They were losing pretty, pretty, uh -oh. wow. They were losing about 2,500 gold uh, just a few minutes ago. I guess the tower picks up for pretty hey, Here we go, the three, lift on the Nyx. Lift on the Nyx right next to the river. The Batrider is stunned out by that Spike Carapace. And now Rubik's trying to do something while his buddy's down for the count. Not going to be enough. Nyx Assassin will get away. Darkseer is here to back his buddies up. Pandello, best wingman of the year. Oh, Pandello. You crazy guy. The arrow's out. MLG arrow. The first MLG arrow we've seen. And now that Starfall. The stun is up on the Marana. Nobody really wanting to initiate yet. The lift is up on the Darkseer. He gets pulled under the tower. He surges away. So neither team able to pick up a kill here yet. Now the Death Prophet ulti will destroy this tower. No questions asked. This is a dead tower. Double damage up on the Death Prophet. The MLG arrow lands on the Darkseer. Where's the lasso? The silence is up on the Batrider. Nice silence. Here's the call down. Lands on two. The wall is there as well. Wall might have been a little bit unnecessary, but you know... Better safe than sorry. You know how it goes. So two heroes down for the Radiant. The Batrider actually buys back in. The uh, Death Prophet getting lifted up here. And here we go. The silence is up on the Batrider. The Batrider falling very low to that rocket barrage. And now Nyx Assassin also picks off a Rubik. Uh, once again, two heroes dead for the Radiant. And uh, it looks like they're going to have to respond to this anti-mage here who 
is building a battle fury. I thought first I saw this and I was like, he's building a shadow blade. What? <laughs> My God! Anti mage picking up that kill on the dark seer here in the bottom lane. Dark seer, yeah, using not a happy camper. That kill. And very well done. Actually, the ulti coming out of the radiance side. They might want to try to engage here. They do I... have. They do not have the sleep just yet. Here we they go. They have the sleep now. Naga Siren. They have the sleep. Naga Siren, you got the sleep. The MLG arrow coming out, lands on the Nyx. Yes, so MLG! And the net is out, the sploosh is there, the silence is up, but it won't be enough. The right click fest. The winner of the right click fest is the Radiant side. The lift is up on the Vengeful Spirit. She's trying to run away, and she does make it away. Trafalgar Law falling to that Marana. And now the Rocket Barrage trying to catch a Rubik here. The song is up. They see two. Oh, here's the initiation. MLG arrow! Right through. Right through. The Naga Sleep staying up for a little too long there. The call down is there on three, doing massive damage. Rubik dies, the Bat Rider dies, and now the Marana. Nothing special, might fall very low. Yes! He does die. Three down for the Radiant, none down for the Dyer's side. The Gyro very low, but no cigar, unfortunately. No cigar. And yeah, and unfortunately, that, that sleep just lasting a little bit too long for that arrow to land. Perhaps that would have turned the fight, but... More than anything, actually, giving the Dyer uh, a moment to think and probably discuss how they wanted to approach that fight. The Rubik did his best, stealing Rocket Barrage, trying to do a little bit of burst damage, but just nothing could be done there. Anti-Mage versus Death Prophet. Neither really want to take this matchup here. Anti-Mage looks so funny when you say so. Yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> his set makes it look a little weirder, too, because his blades are kind of strange. Yeah, exactly. He just kind of looks, he kind of looks like he's trying to, like, go for liftoff like he's just about to spread his arms and just fly away on his blades and now nyx assassin and vengeful spirit gonna be scoping out this radiant jungle here drop a ward trying to look for that anti-mage they really need to shut down the anti-mage because eventually the anti-mage having all this free farm is uh it's gonna come back and bite them in the ass if they don't push down some towers soon they, they have done a pretty good job here of uh pushing down early i will say that they they've taken down all the tier ones They've, uh, and, and that's what they need to be doing. But they just need to continue with this momentum. We saw this happen last game where one team had a really good early game start and it was pretty much even. And then halfway through, they kind of just started not pushing and just kind of hanging around and uh, engaging in these standoffs in the middle lane where nobody was really doing anything. And the other team just kind of pulled ahead because they had a farmer up that wasn't in the middle lane. And here we go, Naga will find herself a Darkseer. The net is there, so is the arrow. Not MLG, but we'll take it. And that's a dead Darkseer. But here comes the cavalry. Rocket Barrage up on that Marana means she is very dead. The call down on the Naga Siren. Batrider fire flying away just to get out of that call down. And now the Dyer are on the hunt, searching for a Rubik. Rubik just running for his life, calling his mother, saying goodbye. I love you. I won't be coming home. Just carry on. He does have surge. Here. He did steal surge. He stole oh, surge. He had it. Never used it. No reason yeah. to use that. Why would you use an ability that would save your life? No, no, no. Don't, <laughs> Don't do that. That's yeah, nonsense. And so it looks like the Dyer will just be moving straight down the uh, top lane here. Marana ulti is up. But we see something really cool. Naga Siren sleep. Now, will we see a net? One of these heroes has got to stick behind. It will be the Nyx Assassin. The net is up. The MLG arrow landed on the gyro. Oh, my God. What an MLG arrow. I love these MLG arrows. And now they're on the chase here. The Radiance Courier uh, getting picked off there. They had invis detection. Who has that detection? I wonder. Rubik, I think, had it. Rubik uh, had it. What? It, it put down a sentry. Oh, is that he? what we're talking about? Oh, no, he actually ran under the sentry right here. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, you can ping now so that I can see what's going on. That's so yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, and um, Anti-Mage sitting under this... Anti-Mage, uh, by the way, yeah, is just having here. a ball. I mean, the they're going to try to get up. him. The double damage up on the uh, Death Prophet. And, and Death Prophet get actually a pretty good counter to the Anti-Mage. Able to silence him there. Um, I mean, they're not able to kill him, but still able to silence him at the very least. Mm -hmm. With this Battle Fury, his farm is just going to take off now. I mean, he's looking at... Let's take a look at that word. That's probably last actually hits. winning at 8300. That's probably the last hits on the towers that are really keeping her up there. But Anti-Mage is close behind as well as... She's the, also 6-0. Uh... and oh. oh, she's also 6-0. and oh. Well, there you go. So 6 of those kills. The Anti-Mage is keeping up on just farm. 
Uh, I don't believe the Azure Mage has any kills at all. No, two kills. Azure Mage has two kills, probably both on the Dirks here, uh, if I remember correctly. And so now it looks like both teams are going to look for an exchange. Uh, Anti Mage moving into this top lane, possibly going to be pushing the tier two. Death Prophet going to be TPing back to defend here. She doesn't have her ulti up. She does get netted, and here we go, the MLG arrow. Not really MLG, actually, because the net was there. Right click fast, 608 gold for that Marana. Marana just loving it. Nothing yeah, special. Yeah, that's something they can't afford to give away, because this likely is a tier 2 for them. Um, for I some reason... The gyrocopter, oh, he does have a TP, so yeah, he's actually going to TP in and try and defend it here. They for really some reason, to defend this tower. For some reason, every time nothing special does something cool, like this MLG arrow, nope, doesn't land on anyone. Uh, whenever he does something cool, I always picture him being, like, super casual about it. Like, yeah, nothing special. Whatever. <laughs> Dominating. Godlike. Whatever. Nothing special. Same old, same old. Daily routine for me. Marana. Nothing That's special. Just, and the Radiant did a really good job there of not overstaying their welcome and just rotating to the other lanes. Knowing that everybody's TP is on cooldown, everybody's kind of dedicated to that lane now. They're able to go ahead and push mid. The Anti-Mage is able to kind of farm in the lane for a little while and do himself a favor there, so... Doing some, making some very good rotations, and more importantly, seeming like they have a very strong overarching plan. Whereas the Dire seem to be scrambling a little bit now, unable to push into these tier twos. They, they're not really strong enough to get there. Um, they're in a position where they're beginning to be on the back foot, uh, and they need to put more, more farm on the gyrocopter. He has picked up his Yasha, so <laughs> Anti Mage really, really, really wants this ward to be dewarded. And I just made a little Mickey Mouse face. So Mickey Mouse, Mickey. Mouse. Smiley. Is that like a Mickey Mouse? Kind of just looks like some dude that has testicles for hair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, dude, that's, that's a sweet hair dude. <laughs> hey, where'd you get those testicles? Oh, you know, just got implants at the barbershop the other day. <laughs> Testicle implants. I would want, like, arms. Giant, like, not giant arms, maybe regularly sized arms for hair, or maybe really small arms. Uh, that way I could get, like, a buttload of stuff done while I'm sleeping. Like, I'm laying down, and then I have, like, a little desk area right next to where I'm sleeping. Right next to where my head is. And all the arms, like, reach out and do a bunch of work in the night. MLG arrow! Yes! Score! That's, I think, the third MLG arrow that has landed. Yeah, it's doing really well. Now, back to your desk problem. Uh, I, it seems to me that while you're sleeping, you won't be able to control those extra arms. Uh, no, I will and Oh, you would? Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, that's, it's I a mean, rule. that's pretty important. <laughs> yeah, that's a pre I should have stated that, I guess. Yeah, but yeah. It's... Because, just because otherwise you could just get a little desk and then use your regular arms. Yeah, true. To, to get stuff done. But I <laughs> true, guess the, yeah. the extra little arms on your head come with extra control. And Batrider here on a 20 minute Blink Dagger. Not where you want to be as a Batrider. Um, but, you know, he's, he's had a pretty tough time. He hasn't gotten all the big ones to sleep. The sleep is that. Oh, and there we go. We see the uh, ulti of Death Prophet doing damage there. Oh, MLG arrow right through onto that gyro. And now the Darkseer is down. The Naga is down. Everybody is dying. The Darkseer wall is there. Rubik falling very low. The call down picking off that Batrider there. Three heroes dead for the Radiant. And now the Dire are poised to take this tier three tower. Man, oh man. Are they feeling good right now? That was a good engagement for them. Looks like they're actually going to TP out instead. Uh, they might want to take a Roche. They have all the outer tier towers down. Well, um, no, they don't, actually. I'm completely wrong. I was thinking about another game, I guess. So two tier two towers left. They could take a Roche. They could take another tier two. It's up to them, really. Yeah, but right now... Up another tier two wouldn't be so bad. Perhaps that tier two in mid to prevent a quick TP uh, reaction from the Radium, but... To be honest, they can just walk into the roof and take it down pretty quickly. I didn't see if anybody has picked up a medallion. They have not. But Vengeful Spirit's Wave of Terror is going to be able to at least bring down some more uh -oh. on that roof. So they're going to do pretty well. Bat Rider. But you crazy? You got your blink? You got your lasso? Naga, are you going to initiate? You don't have a song. You do have a net and a sploosh. The stun is there from the Vengeful. She went in a little bit earlier, actually. And there falls a Naga Siren as well as... A bat rider. What a uh, that was kind of a sloppy initiation. <laughs> Seemed it like was uh, just, it was just sloppy. I don't even think we can call that an initiation. Because <laughs> they just <opened> the hype. <laughs> well, so. I mean, yeah, Naga just kind of walked in. MLG arrow on an illusion. It's an Damn illusion. it.
that's God damn. Actually, I just want to say, the gyrocopter has already got his PKP, and this Death Prophet has gone directly for the Scythe of Vice. What you see a lot in, in a lot of pub games is Death Prophet going for a Bloodstone, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty good, but the Scythe of Vice gives them so much more maneuverability, and she's going to be able to hex that... Uh, that anti mage. Anti mage here actually just pushing the tier three casually. Casual. He's already sitting on an ultimate orb and the recipe for his man to so he's already got it done. Super um, casual. Which is really good. So yeah, so which is casual. Really good. So clock is ticking, man. This is a twenty three minute manta yeah. on an anti mage. This could definitely still turn around. It does like the dire don't actually have a huge gold lead. They only have a two thousand gold lead at twenty three minutes in. I mean that's not that much. It's two towers, basically, and you're pretty much back in the game there. Uh, so here we go. Batrider actually going to try and find a Nyx Assassin here, but the quick Vendetta, and here's the stun. The Firefly is up. Death Prophet trying to help out with the silence here, and they will pick up the kill. So nice nice little pickoff early on there. Batrider maybe playing it a little too uh, aggressively there, uh, especially since he didn't have any backup coming from his team after he blinked in. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm surprised that they're going back down mid. Um, if they want to go for tier threes, I think they, they are in a position where they do need that Roche to actually push high ground. But at least they can do some damage. I guess that's Prophet Salty. Yeah, it's about to come off cooldown in five seconds. So they're going to do some damage. And they have to know that the clock is ticking with this anti mage. Right, right. Naga Siren sheeped up. The ulti is there from the Death Prophet, and she gets swapped in to an instant death. The Darkseer wall is there. Oh, nice! The Rubik stole the ulti, and now we have just a bunch of ghosts flying all over the place. Just fighting each other. That would be really cool if you could have the ghosts, like, duke it out. Like, that was the counter to Death Prophet's ulti, is her own ulti. Yeah, they, <laughs> all the ghosts are too busy fighting each other. Yeah, exactly. And here we go. The Batrider blinks in. They have the Marana Invis to initiate. The MLG arrow is up! Plus the net! I will call that MLG because it was! It was so MLG, nothing special, so casual about it all as well. Yeah, the Naga Siren here. song is up, and here we go, the initiation. The Nyx is vendetta he will come out of it to stun up that Rubik. Free kill, Nyx? Yes, the Rubik falls, and so will the Naga Siren, and so will the Marana. Too much damage, double kill for that Death's Prophet. Triple kill for that Death's Prophet. Anti-Mage, um, the only one left, pushing in that tier 3 here. Didn't act, manage to take a barracks, but nicely done. He's split pushing. He's doing what well he needs done. to do. That split push is really that saved of that fight, because that fight was an utter disaster for them. That vacuum... Oh! Oh, oh God! When you're, like, five years old and you're playing with a grown-up, like, playing basketball with a grown-up, and then they just kind of, like, own the shit out of you, and you just, <laughs> like, feel like shit for a little while. Like, uh, that's, that's what I feel like... That Nyx Assassin felt right there when that anti-mage came in. He's like, oh shit, <laughs> the cat's back, and the mice can no longer play. This anti-mage is the <laughs> <No> cat. <laughs> yes, these, this anti-mage is the cat, and now the entire Dire team are just a bunch of mice playing while the anti-mage is away. But he's back, and he's ready to fight. He's got his Mantis style. He's got a Battle Fury. And he's going to take you guys down. Trust me. Yeah, he's sitting on almost 3,000 gold. These Ancients are going to be great for him. I didn't see... Yeah, they actually they only have one stack here for the Gyrocopter, so he's not going to be able to farm quite as quickly as this Anti-Mage. Of course, not a, not a lot of heroes can. Uh, but the guy really needs to take a rush and needs to take a good fight because they're down at Tier 3, and that's not good. That means the lane will be pushing in the Radiant's favor for quite some time. Uh, but just on top of that, the last couple of engagements coming out of them have not been stellar. So we actually see that the Dire are actually keeping up very good vision. The Radiance ward, the only ward they have is actually on this rune spot, and it's a defensive ward, so not doing yeah. very well. I'm sorry, I, I pinged there. Um, yeah, I really forgot sure to mention. Yet. But when I learned how to circle, I'll circle it. So, yeah, I can't, you can't circle for some reason right now, the game paused. Oh, when it's paused, perhaps when it's paused, yeah. So, yeah, one of the things, the Radiance, I mean, the Dire, it's like a ticking time bomb for them. By 35 minutes, they're going to be in a situation where they just can't fight. Right. Um, once something like a heart comes up on this anti-mage, it's going to be a huge deal, so... Hopefully yeah. they can really transition into something much better here. Definitely. Um, but the Radiant are doing everything they need to do. That split push is a big part, and that's not something I mentioned in the plan for the Radiant earlier on, but... Having them push, having them split push, having that anti-mage split push makes these engagements for the Dire just so costly every single time. Um, because even if they win the fight, they can't transition into a push. They all need to go and 
and fight. Um, and it actually forced all of them to buy back. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Dyer actually go for a Roche here. They have phenomenal warding, and this is just one of the best times to go. The Radiant have no Roche wards and no wards nearby to really figure out what's going on. So hopefully the Dyer take the most of the situation. Um, just take advantage of it in general. So. Right. Uh, I mean, the the Dyer have been able to secure a nice lead here. They've had nice warding the entire game. We've got a ward here. We've got a ward here. We've got a ward here. It's all very offensive, uh, which is appropriate, mm -hmm. seeing as how they uh, they have a tower advantage. They have a slight gold advantage, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And yeah. uh, and so you know, nice warding, trying to keep that anti mage locked down. But they've really they just haven't been using the wards. Um, as much as I might like, because this anti-mage, it just isn't effectively shut down right now. He's 3-1, he's got 227 last hits, net worth 14,000, 14,500, highest net worth in the game. I mean, that's pretty much where an anti-mage generally sits, is at the top of the net worth, because he's just pretty much farming the entire game. Right. Um, but, you know, you just really, really need to shut him down, and they, they have good wards for that, but they haven't really been following through with the good warding as much as I'm Yeah, absolutely. Right. They have good words for catching out this anti One of the problems is he's now strong enough, and especially with the Manta Illusions, he's in a situation where he can start uh, split pushing a lot more than oh, just Oh, here we go. Trouble. Death Prophet Invis initiates on this Rubik. The silence is up, and here's the Gyro coming in with that Rocket Barrage. No call down necessary. Unstoppable Death Prophet. My god. That pickoff on the Naga Siren is huge. Yeah, that was um, essential. They're probably going to take a tier 3 now. Yeah, that pickoff is really huge. Uh, not because she had sleep up, she actually didn't, but just the threat of that sleep is so big. Um, and Naga's one of those heroes, like, keeping track of her sleep is that the equivalent rider. of... Oh, actually. actually, big split push here. Trafalgar Law falling to that one arrow from the Marana, and the call down is here, trying to dissuade this anti-mage from pushing any longer. And it worked. He's going back because that Batrider falls to the Death Prophet who is just having a freebie on these racks until the Anti-Mage shows up. The Cat's back. And now Soul in a lot of trouble here, actually. Uh, Sidetra... Not Soul, sorry. Sidetra's in a lot of trouble. Is being pursued by a, a bunch of Radiant heroes. Takes a left, they take a right. And all is good for Sidetra's. The Phase Boots will get... Her away, I guess. I'll just say her. Yeah. And long chase. Well, MLG arrows coming out. Where did that arrow go? I heard it. I heard the arrow. Yeah, I heard uh, it as well. Probably hitting a neutral, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Another arrow. Did I hear another arrow? My god. No, I didn't. Jaro's actually opted to go for a Mantis out here. And so um, it looks like... Bad idea. And this, very, this game could very likely turn into a base race uh, with, both, with both teams having such good push. I think I, it's just going to turn into the Radiant make a big comeback. They get like they make a uh, they get a nice kill here, or they get a nice pick off, have a nice fight, and then they take a Rax and they probably might win, or they lose and then they lose the game. Silence up on that Bat Rider. Here's the call down. Here's the Nick stun. Oh my God! Instantly dead. Two dead for the Radiant. Bat Rider and Rubik down. Nick's falling very low. The Naga sleep is there. Naga just dies. Uh, BKB Gyro will ensure her death. The arrow not MLG enough. And this looks really good for the Dire, really bad for the Radiant. Anti-Mage falling very low. Gonna blink away to safety. But here come the Dire. They're following up. They're following up! The stun is there. Who else is here? Death Prophet, solo. MLG arrow, not gonna land. Not this time, buddy. Not this time. Yeah, and they're and so, going for that push right down mid. They're trying to take these racks. Taking these racks is actually pretty big, considering both the tiers are up. No, nope. oh, they're going to go for the Roche. Yes! Man, that is a smart idea. Finally! That is a very smart idea. Taking that Roche, especially since all the heroes are back up now. Taking that Roche, they know the Naga Sleep is spent, so that's not going to be going off. And these ghosts are going to bring that Roche so fast. Actually, the Medallion picked up on that Vengeful Spirit. So, yeah, this Roche is gone. And 30 minutes in, we have our first Roche falling. So... By the way, for what anybody out there, what do you do if you're the radiant? Uh, pfft, find the well. You just gotta wait. You're waiting for them to make a mistake, basically. You, the anti mage is doing exactly what he needs to do, which is split push his balls off. Uh, whenever there's an engagement like coming up into your high ground, you're pretty much split pushing. Here's the MLG arrow, and no one is there to receive it. Um, 
And actually, they might find a pickoff here on the Nyx Assassin in the bottom lane. They're doing the right thing, the Radiant, right now. They just keep losing these engagements. I would split push more than I would, like, straight up engage into them. Nyx Assassin getting netted up here. Anti-Mage doing what he can. No Vendetta. Is there a Vendetta? 30 seconds. Will he be able to crawl away? Nope. MLG Arrow would have landed. I kind of wish that that Anti-Mage would have let it land, but no matter. No matter. Nyx Assassin will buy back in. Let's take a, let's take a look at... Actually, we're already on net worth. 17,000 for the anti-mage. My god. And it actually yeah, looks like base race. Because... Oh, Dennis yeah, may have called some... it. This is for the finals. Uh, just a reminder everyone watch. This is for the finals, so the winner does take everything. This is a best of one. And they're actually going to TP back to fight. And this is not a bad idea. They are in a situation where they can fight and probably win. I was watching some badass creeps trying to man mode a barracks by themselves. But then they got killed. Nice. And here we go. Nyx Assassin. Vendetta. Oh, nice leap. Saves her from the stun. Nothing special. Casually walks away. Eh, nothing special. Screw it. Just leaped out of this stun. Man. And this anti may just picked up a butterfly. This is going to be a big problem for them. I wouldn't be surprised to see Gyro actually go for an MKB now that he's seen that butterfly come out. Um, just to get rid of that miss chance because that miss chance is going to be so huge it's going to allow the anti mage to deal so much damage and of course steal i mean uh bring down so much mana and this yeah, is exactly you see, anti -mage? you see mm -hmm. this anti-mage you see this yeah just pushing in that lane this is good yeah yeah, yeah exactly I can't do anything about it and look they're already like you can already kind of feel them panicking yeah pink's pinging top mm -hmm. and and they just can't like commit to a push with this anti-mage here and so they all tp back yeah, that's Nothing. it. He's forced the reaction. That's all he needed to do. And now they won't lose this tier 2. As easily, at least. The arrow, MLG, not landing. Ventral Spirit, shooting some light into the crowd. Oh, my god. He actually almost got caught here. Nyx Assassin was vendetted up. Ready to strike. And actually, the Dire have the Aegis right now. So they really should be committing a little harder to a push. Yeah, I'm surprised that they decided to push that bottom lane. I understand getting that tier two is not bad, but pushing down mid is where they have such an advantage. Just because they have both. Here tier we one go. And tier two. MLG arrow oh. lands on Venge. Yes, it's so satisfying. Naga going in a little early again. What the hell, Naga? The sleep is up. Doesn't land on the Venge yet. Actually, she's just going to use it to disengage. All uh, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that 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 might cost them. Sleep feels uh, very wasted. That's a 170 second cooldown. Um, yeah, and I'm surprised she hasn't put the second level into sleep. I don't know why. I guess she's more of like a combat Naga Siren. Um, yeah, that's how it goes, man. Yeah, of course, the sleep perhaps hard to coordinate with her teammates, but still, they have such a good situation where if they sleep, I mean, we discussed this during the draft. Sleep and then like four stuns, <laughs> and the entire team is just standing there looking silly. So right. I don't know. I guess that sleep kind of wasted. This Rubik doesn't have a spell. Oh, here we go. A clash here. The Marana Pro Arrows. I didn't even see it. I heard it launch, though. Doesn't land. Anti-Mage going to get stunned up here. Oh, Anti-Mage. The savior of your team. This game rests on your shoulders. Heavy yeah, lies the crown. They drafted, for, right? they drafted to defend long enough for the Anti-Mage to kick in. And he's already paid off by taking two tier three towers. Right. Um... So things are going rather well for this Nyx Assassin. Actually, in the middle lane, Nyx Assassin going hard. He's under a sentry, but the sheep is there. The stun is up, and we will see a dead Batrider. The net up on that Nyx Assassin. MLG arrow just into the center of a crowd. Finds Avenge. And now Death Prophet with that ulti just going to burn down these barracks super quick. Naga doing what she can, sending in some illusion. The sploosh is out. Just a scratch. Anti-Mage coming in, man-moting up. The Darkseer wall is there, and now Anti-Mage in a lot of trouble. The call-down is there, but will he live? No. Anti-Mage is dead. So is the Rubik. So is the Naga. My god. That was quick. Jesus. Four heroes dead for the Radiant side. Three bought back. Anti-Mage going to try and fight it up, but not enough. Not enough. Anti-Mage not strong enough. Naga Siren going into the middle. They pop that Aegis on the Gyro. The Sploosh... Where's the sploosh? She's silenced right now. Rampage for the Death Prophet. My god, who did she just pick up? Marana. Jesus. And so Marana will just DC out. No GG, nothing special. Casual. Just another game for nothing special. Ever so casually GG's out. Without saying GG. It's all good. Nothing special. The lift. Just 
trying to get a little victory at least. But no, yeah, at least they will find nothing. All barracks down soon enough, or at least two barracks down soon enough. The GG is called, and the Radiant have lost. The winners of this series of games for Engage TV uh, will be the Dire side. Congratulations to all you Dire players, Cytraz, Koner, Show, Pandello, uh, Ein Stweck Bleck, and Trafalgar Law will now be receiving 100 D2L points, I believe, right? Yes. Congratulations to all of them. Brackets. What would you have done differently if you were the Radiant team there, Dennis? Um, very simple. The Naga Sleeps were not... On good. point? On point? <laughs> they were just, yeah, they were just not... They didn't feel coordinated. They felt like just Naga's sleep rather than for the entire team. Right. And the anti-mage probably should have picked up a big KB. Right, um, right. I think the Hex and the Silence really did him in, in those fights. The call down, the rocket barrage, she was running in and just getting burst down, and that's not where you want to be as an anti mage. I mean, and the anti mage was doing really, really well farming, right? He, he got. He, was, he did fantastic. He did yeah. absolutely fantastic farming. Uh, he's, he's sitting on 596 gold per minute in a 35 minute game. Right. Which is huge. Absolutely huge. I mean, the, the second place is really that, um, that gyrocopter at 491 on the enemy team, and he picked up a lot of kills in, you know, just the last couple of minutes. So those don't really even count. It's just, he did really well, but that BKB, that inability to not get silenced and hexed right off the bat when he jumped in, the damage from the wall, um, just being way, far too big for him. Well, it's been fun, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this game of Engage TV. Dennis, are we done for the day? or? Uh... Uh, yeah, I believe we're done for the day. I would uh, like to thank everyone. Oh, thank yes, you. of course. We thank everyone that's here. We'll be reading out your names shortly. We would also like to thank Engage TV for letting us cast their uh, tournaments here. It's been fun, and we're going to be doing uh, more of it in the future, I hope. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the next tournament coming up is in four days. Hopefully we'll be able to cast that. Uh, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see how everything works out. Yeah, but thanks again to Engage TV. Go check out their site. they got a fun ladder going on there. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed Thanks for tuning in, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. We might be back up with another stream, playing some other games, whatnot, maybe in 10 minutes or so. So stay tuned if you're here for that. If not, thanks for watching. Tune in next time. Bye. My god! I've made a horrible mistake! I just said that we were gonna read out your names, like a good person, and then I didn't do it. So, uh, we're gonna actually read half and half here. I'll do the top half, you can do the bottom half. I'll try and split it up here. Acre 1! You my man, Archion! You also my man. Oh yeah, Toast! Welcome back, my friend. Chubbard71, Dalek Sec 53 Dizzy Koo, Dota Battle Studios, Entity for Life, and you take the next half I, uh, actually wait there's oh, way more than that no. holy crap that's way more than that that's not half You're trying to trying to cheat me out of my half here you didn't mention it it's yeah, like I'm just trying to get some more under that's my like note, you know? that's like letting me go to like the school dance with spinach in my teeth or something like that yeah you the scumbag dance. scumbag anyway moving on fallen 4000 i think i stopped at yes that uh, is the ne not 4000 40000 fallen 40000 you're ten yeah, times better than what I said before. Gil Gazerks, welcome to you, my friend. Uh, newt me, gnut me, newt me. I think it's newt me, nut me, nut me, nut me. It is. And Heath, welcome to you, Heath. Hanfinator, and I'll hand it off to my friend Dennis here. You can take the rest. Uh, we've got Hula one eighty seven. Thank you very much. Cryogenic twelve nine two one. Lolik. Mega MJ, Mr. Biscuit of Fire, Mr. Jovial, Octodile, or one on 90, Peanut Better 27, Puff Daddy joining us today, Cadro 99, Scruff Peter, 
Sergeant Penguin 47, Showbiz 123, Snowy, Soli, Spaghetti, TC, Top Player 8888, Waha, Wargon, and Yoshi Mitsu. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget to follow us. Um, I hope you guys had fun. By the way, just one last thing. Sorry. Um, there was some mention of there being an issue with the in-game sound. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I know there was the issue where we weren't, we just straight up weren't broadcasting our voices in Dota TV. Uh, right. So we fixed that hopefully halfway through. But if there were any other issues, please feel free to flame the shit out of us in chat. Uh, we will take your flame and turn it into constructive criticism and then use it. So... To make cookies. Yeah. Free, feel free to do that whenever you feel like it. And now we will be uh, making our transition into the music. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Bye.